Welcome back to question three of our series on projectile motion problems. The question reads, an airplane traveling at 100 meters per second drops a bomb from a height of 1,500 meters. Find the time of flight of the bomb, the distance traveled, and velocity components as the bomb strikes the ground. Let's begin with an illustration. We have an airplane that is traveling at a constant velocity of 100 meters per second. And let's say at this point it drops a bomb. And because the velocity is horizontal going this way, the bomb will drop directly down, but it will eventually take on a parabolic trajectory like this. Think about it. If it falls down and there is an initial velocity going this way, it will eventually push the bomb downwards. In addition, since the bomb is falling down, the acceleration due to gravity will be positive because it's contributing to the speed of the bomb. It is not a decelerating factor as you saw in questions one and two. So if I increase the size of these vectors, these arrows, and rather than this one extending in this direction, I can move it in this direction. And adding these two vectors should give you one that goes like that. So the velocity, the x component of this red vector should be I'll represent it as v sub x, 100 meters per second. And the initial velocity, the moment the bomb is dropped, I'll represent it as v sub zero is equal to zero meters per second. Now using one of these formulas that we used already in questions one and two, I want you to focus on this one in particular. So as discussed in question two, this part represents the y component of that vector. And we can even represent these two factors as v sub y times t. Because the initial velocity is zero, anything times zero is equal to zero. So all of this would go to zero if we do choose to use this formula. And as already mentioned, since the gravity is actually increasing the speed of that bomb, since it's going in the direction downwards, we can make this part positive. So we have y is equal to 0 0.5 times gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. The distance to the ground is 1,500. So I'll replace this y value with 1,500. And by solving for t, we can actually find out the time it takes the bomb to reach the ground. Next, I'll simplify the right side just to make matters easier to work with. We have 4.9 t squared and 1500 on the left side, dividing both sides by 4.9 will give us two t values, one being positive, one being negative. So using our calculator, we have 1500 divided by 4.9 and then square rooting this value, we end up with a t value that is 17 50, that's one of our t values, seconds. And another t value that will be the opposite of this. So negative 17, 50 seconds. Of course, it doesn't make sense to select a negative t value since we're dealing with time. Let's continue to use 17.5. And if you're taking into account significant figures, neither of these numbers have a decimal. So technically this should be, if we look back, only 17 seconds. But I'll continue working with 17.5 just so that I don't run into any problems going forward. I can even use 17.49 to be even more accurate. So it takes 17.5 seconds roughly for this bomb to touch the ground. That answers the first part, which is the time that the bomb takes to hit the ground. Then we have the distance traveled. If it takes 17 seconds to reach the ground and the airplane was moving at 100 meters per second. All I have to do is take 100 meters per second and multiply it by 17 seconds. Using dimensional analysis, you can see how the units cancel out. You see how this seconds unit cancels out with this one. So multiplying these out, it's 1700 meters. And finally, we want to find the velocity components as the bomb strikes the ground. So if we were to extend a vector 
let's say that this point is where it strikes the ground. If we were to extend a vector from here, they are looking for the y component and the x component. And for that, we can use these two formulas. So for the x component, we can say that it was 100 as the initial velocity, meters per second, times cosine at an angle of, and if it strikes the ground, that makes an angle of zero. So cosine at zero is equal to one. So that right there, 100 times one is the x component. And for the y component, so that's v sub y, I'll use this formula. Sine at an angle of zero is zero. So all of this goes away. And just like I mentioned earlier, because the gravity is contributing to the velocity, it shouldn't be negative g times t. That's only if gravity is acting as a decelerating force. So this should be positive 9.8 times the amount of seconds that it took to land, that was 17. Multiplying these out, 9.8 times 17 makes roughly 166.6. If we round this to the correct number of significant figures, the answer should be 167. 167 meters per second. And so there you have it. Our third question solved for projectile motion problems.